Hey, Julie. One of those. Yeah. Okay. All right. No problem. All right. Good luck. All right. Thanks. Bye. Hey, Robin. Hi. Hey, Julie. How are you? Good. How are you? Okay. Thank you for uh, agreeing. Not that it was last minute, but the email only went out on Friday and then Shabbat and the holiday. Right, I, right. Like... Yeah, we're good. We want to get started. So this is great. I feel like we're getting a jump on it. Yeah. Well, you guys are the first, so. Yeah. You'll be in the know. I noticed that. Really <laughs> so, yes. I think Absolutely. you were among the first to answer, too. So, oh, okay. Um, so, he's going to talk to us for half an hour. We're going to take And then you, you all are welcome to stay on if you are all able as a subgroup. Okay. Three of you, if you want to. I did that. I made the meeting for two hours. This Zoom. Oh, wow. So if you want to stay on, you can. Okay. You know what? I could probably um, stay on. It, if I take it and move it to my phone and then go in the car, we're down the shore. I just wanted to oh. stay here long enough to be in the meeting and sit at a table and then I can right. continue. Well, that's up to you. So the subgroups are really just you and David and Donna. Okay. So it'll be up to you, the three of you to like Connie and I won't be there. The canner is able, isn't able to be here anyway. So it will just be the three of you deciding when you want to meet. Okay. When you can and want to. David and I agreed that we would be happy to meet in person, and Donna is not ready for that yet. But, but we you could, could, we could, you know, do a two-way like, uh, yeah, you know, FaceTime and David and I together. And Correct. Donna, Correct. Um, yeah. So, so has she not had the vaccine yet, or? Um, I, Maybe she's too young. Know. I don't know. I don't know. You have, right? I yeah. have. Yeah, and I, I, I'm We're, younger than Donna, so. We ate in a restaurant last night for the first time in 14, 15 months. Right. Yeah. I and mean, was it, it was, delicious? It was wonderful. It was, <laughs> there were other congregants there. It was really interesting. You didn't have to do dishes, so that was a good thing. Not, not. And I didn't have any food anyway, because we ended Pesach oh, right. last night. So right. we had, I, I wouldn't have been able to cook anyway. I ate leftovers last night. I was going to get thinking about pizza and I don't know I was just like I mean Maggio's was open I live in in Hapover right by Huntington Valley so Maggio's was open but I like ate leftovers from pasta right my soup that I liked anyway so it was Easter and so there wasn't so much right. going on down here there wasn't so many places that you could right well the place I wanted pizza from wasn't open I love um Vince's at Grant and the Boulevard it used to be Charlie's on Whitaker in the Boulevard, mm -hmm. and now Vince's son has the place at, uh, or Charlie's son has the place at Grant and the Boulevard, what and a lot of about pizza. That pizza. What is your what is the what is the part that you love about that? Well, pizza? the crust is thin, and I do like thinner crust. It's not okay. Jules. It's not like matzah thin, right? But it's thin. Like and Domino's thin. Mm, like Domino's maybe, thin but this is really good homemade hand tossed pizza. And so my dad used to go to Charlie's when he was a kid. 
And then growing up, this is the pizza we ate. And my dad, we lived in the Northeast and my dad, we would order pizza from there and I would go with my dad in the car. I actually think I'm gonna put this story in connections and for Shavuot. Um, and um, I would go with my dad to pick it up. And this is before seat belts and all the kids couldn't sit in the front and all that other stuff. Hi, Connie. So I would have to, I would go with him and I would have to hold this pizza perfectly straight because God forbid the cheese slid like to the side. And it was hot under your hand. It was so hot. Oh, and I would say, dad, no. can I put it on the floor? Can I put it in the trunk? No, no, no. 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 It would be like ironing my skin, right? <laughs> because I grew up with it and I have those memories of it. I don't even, I don't even know, but I know like Val and Joe Lieberman go there. There's a lot of people that go there. And my kids love it because it's like, you know, it's memories of my dad. I don't know. But anyway, that's, that's what great. I wanted. That's, that's, that's what creates a great experience. Yeah. So my birthday's on the 16th. So the kids already know. They always say, don't you want to go somewhere better, mom? Nope. Nope. I just want Vince's nope. pizza. I don't eat pizza very often. So for me, yeah, it's like me. a huge treat. <sighs> so uh, anyway, Maggio's is good, but... I, we don't, I, I, I like the, um, I like to do a uh, Trader Joe's has like a crust that you make in your house. Mm -hmm. And then we put um, Beyond Burger. We like fry okay. it up and put Beyond Burger and sauce and cheese. And it's like, I mean, I've never had meat and cheese together, right. but, but I imagine that's what I, like a, a meat lover's pizza would be like. The Trader Joe's flatbread, the organic, I think it's the organic flatbread, maybe. It's very good, too. It's Is like it? long, oblong, and it's also very good. It's already pre-made. You just put it in the oven, but it's very good and crispy and definitely good, too. Hi, Connie. Hi. How are you guys? exhausted, Connie. What? You look exhausted. I'm um, really, yeah. Long day. Yeah, well, also, long we're not, I'm not used to these days because it's, we've been, you know, on lockdown for so long so and I wore heels today oh. they're like little kitten heels and I thought I was going to have to take my shoes off and walk back to the office barefoot <laughs> oh my gosh heels. yeah oh my gosh I know I didn't know they still existed I saw I, a woman yeah. last yeah. night wearing like stiletto heels and I thought why why but she was dressed up, I guess, for Easter, and she looked good. And but she was like taking those little steps that mm -hmm. you take when you're wearing shoes that are like dangerously uncomfortable. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I think I'm wearing yeah. running shoes forever now. I don't think I'm ever wearing any yeah, shoes. Yeah, we've been at wearing all. socks. Like nobody takes shoes in the house anymore. So we've been like we've been walking around in socks for months. <laughs> for sure. So Rabbi well, Herring did know this was happening okay. after a lot of back and forth. I, I've read through all of his materials and um, I spent a day on the internet doing some research for our, you know, four choices and I can't wait to get started. I've so many things to say. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Donna, is she, she said she was she okay she too, was, right? She, she said, said she would be here. Yep. Right. Rabbi Herring had a meeting right before this. He said he would have to leave that meeting a few minutes early to get to this one. So I guess he's right. in between. Right. He's running. Yep. So just while we're waiting, you, you guys know that you're going to organize your own meetings, right? If you yeah. can meet whenever you want. Okay. And if you need Julie to do the Zoom, she's glad to do it. But, um, you know, whenever you guys want to meet as many times as you want to, that's fine. And if you want, I mean, maybe the because of your topic, if you wanted Cantor to join, I'm sure he would be happy to. Not maybe Love every time, but, you know. Love to pick his brain about some of this. Right. I mean, he and I have sat and talked, but, but specifically, yes, I'd love to know right. what um he thinks is possible right I mean I think he's got a, a million amazing ideas and, oh. and he's a great resource unbelievable unbelievable right yeah yeah it's really great I mean the first time we 
heard him. It was one of those first Friday nights outside when we were all in the parking lot. Um, and we were just like blown away with his voice. We could not believe that what we were hearing. Yeah, it's been a while. Oh my goodness, I know. I think, I think it, we went to two outdoor and that's it. It was nice, it was nice outdoors. It was a little yeah, weird in the park. Yeah, what, the but... end of the summer, like, the be like when it was still warm out, September. Right, right. Yeah. 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 When do we think we're gonna open up? Do we have any ideas? Nope, we're not even back working in the building. I know, and when are they, I like, I know we're doing construction, has it started? Is it in the middle? Like, where are we with this? You would have thought that all this time we would have been constructing while nobody was there. What construction? Um, just the, the man trap, the movement of the main entrance to a new place. Yeah, that, who the... knows if that's when or if that's ever happening. That's been really? talked about for the past, I don't know how many years. I so know. I don't know if it is, we it isn't. We on it. We had money allocated. We have an, a... a you know, an architect, like, are we not? <sighs> I think there's been so many other things with this whole airflow mm -hmm. thing to, to figure out how the, the best way that the airflow for the, the virus and, you know, all the other things that are coming from trying to figure out how to place the preschool in the right way so that it, works, the upstairs where the preschool was, there's airflow issues. And I think it just is probably on a back burner. It's a shame. Well, you know, like, un I, I guess, unfortunately, like, I, I don't understand what the problem with Rabbi Herring is. I don't now either. he sent me at 537 an email said, I thought we were having three culture subgroup meetings, but I only see one is scheduled. I, I don't understand why he's not getting my emails. Um, unfortunately, we had other, you know, weird stuff come up. So like, a, like a, you know, pandemic kind of deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knew? Who knew? Yeah. Who knew? All right. We'll get it together. We'll get it together. I, I just I keep thinking, oh, maybe by June we'll all be back and we'll be doing. Maybe. Maybe, but. I mean, the, the testing or the um, studies on the, on the vaccines are coming back really positive, you know. Yeah, yeah. Really positive. I, I think they're better than what they expected them to be. So, so that's really hopeful. Very hopeful. And, but I yeah. think. Half the battle is um, the mental comfort of people. Like some people will be right. like, yeah, I can't wait to get back. I'm vaccinated like my husband. Oh my God, let's go to Florida. And then there's other people who say, I'm not ready to meet in someone's house yet. So right. there's such a spectrum of, of comfort levels, regardless right. of what the studies I don't know. I think I forgot how to socialize. I mean, we've hibernated <laughs> for so long that, you know, I, I feel very, um, I don't know, like I forgot. Yeah, yeah. In some degrees, but then with Zoom, I mean, we've, I've seen people that I would never have like sat and looked at and spoken to. And so there's been some good well, we've been working over Zoom, so by the time the end of the day comes, I don't want to even see Zoom. Um, I don't even go near it. And this is like so hard for me to come home and turn on the Zoom. But, and then have another meeting after. Being and then have a, right, exactly. On yeah. the computer all day. It's not good for your eyes. Are you no. wearing blue glasses? There's I like heard about them. I haven't tried them, but I've heard that blue glasses are supposed to be good. Yeah, the there's some kind of blue glasses. Oh, we were gonna buy them for the um, for our grandkids because they're they they were for a while Zoom right. school, and we were right. concerned about how much time they were spending in front of the computer. I don't know what happened. I guess I guess they realized 
kids weren't going to keep them on. It's or... terribly frustrating. Okay, hang on one moment. Hello. Okay. We're mostly here. I every I'm so I've been trying to get on for ten minutes. Mm, sorry. No, that's I'm sorry. I don't like to be late, and I know everybody's working hard to accomplish what you need. So my. My apology. I tried. Uh, Julie and Robin each sent me the links and I got bumped off each time, but I'm here. So my apology. Can we do some introductions quickly? I'm just calling Donna to see where she is. Robin Katz. Hi, Robin. David Gordon. Hi. Okay. Hi, Connie. Hi, Rabbi. Anybody go to Central or, or a Girls High? I'm from Boston, so now. Oh. <laughs> I lived in Mount Airy. I grew up that. in Mount Airy. I grew up in Overbrook Park many years ago. Had I, oh, I didn't know you were originally from here. Life. If I say Gaz or, or, you know, down the shore, then you'll... Down the shore, that's where I am. Down the then shore. Then you'll... Where? <laughs> Margate. Oh, lovely. Lovely. I, I spent quite a number of summers in... Um, Ventner, and uh, I think I worked at Camp by the Sea, which oh was. Oh my a... gosh! Did you at the JCC? Yes, I did. My kids went there. My grandkids went there. That is really funny. They are having a summer session. They were sold out almost immediately. That's one. I, I mean, yeah. thank God. Yeah. It's been so difficult. Well, everyone's been affected, but I think of uh, I've couple of grandchildren that I hope to be able to actually see for the first time since July when I drive to Chicago in a few weeks. But parents are meant to be educators, but not like homeschoolers right. for so long. Right. right. Hard. Uh, it's hard. Well, Julie, should we begin? Yeah, Donna didn't answer at all, so I left her a message. And I am recording because the cancer couldn't make it, and he asked me to record. So sure. the meeting's being recorded, and Donna can... Listen in whenever she gets whenever she gets to it. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Connie, did you want to? Are you already explain what the meeting was about? Um, I think I didn't explain. I just said that you wanted to speak yes. with them, but um, I think we can just start with with what you have to say. Sure. Rabbi. Okay, so I wanted to meet with you because um, my sense is that there is some lack of clarity still. Or maybe it would be helpful to hear from my perspective what the task is of this subgroup. So I want to begin with the ending. And I just completed this document today, which you will receive. Uh, Connie has a, a copy of it. And essentially, this is your finished product, which will be a strategic initiative. Um, will be summarized on two pages. One will just be a projected budget, but the other will, will include why this initiative is needed, a description of it, how you define success, right? How will you know that this has impact on Jewish lives or on your Jewish community? Um, not only what that vision is, but how will you assess it, right? And it's not just a matter of how many people showed up, but um, again, did it have an impact in terms of furthering this brand of culture, connection, and community? Um, what was that impact? Did it get them to um, learn more about Jewish culture, right? Did it get them to meet other people in the congregation who share that interest? So it's, it's beyond the number of people who show up for an event, but really what that event can begin to do in terms of having an impact on them and on the community. Um, and there'll also be a communications plan because very often, no matter how hard um, you communicate what it is that you're doing, people will say something like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know about that. If I'd heard about it, I would have been there. Um, given that there are different audiences that use different communications, whether you know it's um, 
Twitter, Snapchat, Pinterest, you know, in addition to Facebook and email and, um, you know, the, the, the bulletin. Um, and sometimes phone calls actually work too, by the way, um, if you have the, the people power to do it. Because people are saturated with communications, it's also important to think, if I want to reach um, boomers, what's the best audience or grandparents? If I want to try to engage um, those who are in their 30s, what would be the best way to reach them? So it involves, and you have an, um, Ruth Lefton or somebody from a communications committee that she, she's chairing can help, is there to help you with that. So end product is a strategic initiative summarized on one page. Now I'd like to give you the roadmap for how to get from a strategic initiative to the end product. Um, one of the stark findings from the research that I did on the congregation from the background reading is that there is, aside from the building, um, which is unique, there is no clear brand identity. Meaning when I think of Beth Shalom, I think of, and in some congregations, it's environmental Judaism, it's social justice, it's we're a learning congregation or we're a davening congregation. It doesn't mean that congregations don't do many things, but they're, a brand means that they're distinguished by a couple of big things that they value the most and they put their time, money, and energy toward. Um, what came out of the work that we did with the Strategic Planning Committee is culture connections and compassion. The compassion piece, uh, you know, and this is really building on your assets already. You have, you know, this wonderful, um, this mitzvah food pantry, right? That's a springboard for the compassion part. Um, you have the center for spirituality. That's one kind of connection. And you have this wonderful soccer um, league that gets people from all over the community. That's a social connection, right? And then you have a rich legacy of um, Jewish music and you have a beautiful building, you know? So the idea in the brand is to take the assets of the congregation, the legacy of the congregation and now to redirect it toward the future because the congregation has been, um, I, I think it's been kind of stuck for a while for a variety of reasons. So to get from an idea to here, we first need to understand what a strategic initiative is and how that's different from a program. Um, and I apologize, I don't like to speak the whole time. Sometimes it's necessary just for background, but I, I want to stop here for a moment and just see if you have any any questions. No. Yeah. No. I. I. I mean, we we got our planning template, our goals. We we have a lot of okay material to work with. So if if you're you're comfortable with what you have, um, I, the, the one thing that I just wanna emphasize, cause I, this seems to have come up in some meetings. An initiative is not the same as a program. A program may be a very fine one-off scholar in residence weekend. It may be, um, you know, a day of feeding the hungry, you know, around Thanksgiving, for example. And they're valuable. But the question is, in terms of moving the congregation forward, um, what do they lead to afterwards? I mean, a memory, um, but the idea of all of the work that you do now, um, ideally, is that everything should be directed toward taking, in this case, 
the culture component and having it not become a program, but an initiative which has ongoing impact. And ongoing impact happens when let's say that scholar in, in, in residence program um, is tied to the broader work of the congregation. So if you're focusing on connection to Israel and you bring in a, a scholar and resident, then the people who come or may be interest can, interested can then be kind of um, moved toward ongoing activities of Israel. And over time, they develop new knowledge, understanding, um, maybe even want to visit. So that's the key difference between program, which may be a fine one-off without anything lasting, and an initiative which is really designed um, to move people wherever they are, are on that continuum of, of involvement a little bit deeper in. So um, do you wanna talk about your thinking of the initiatives that you're working on? I mean, what, what would be helpful for, for you? And Connie, I, I also wanna ask you as the chair. So I think that um, um, we voted, or as a group, what was the, you know, what they wanted to work on, what excited them. So each committee has the the top vote, and then four or five additional ones. So, so Robin, maybe you and David can can talk to um, Rabbi Herring about about those and in, in what you would do with them, or what your plans are you know, or just got for, okay. for going forward. Sure. Um, I can begin, if that's all right with you, David. Sure. So our, we, have, we have potentially four things that are linked together. Mm -hmm. They're all within the same uh, realm. Uh, the most popular vote was to create a cappella competitions. The second one was intergenerational choir collaborating with other houses of worship. The third thing was establish monthly community sings. And the fourth one was preschool exposure to melodic language. I think they're all linked. And I think mm. that starting somewhere can get us all of these things if planned correctly. So that, so that one leads into another because it, it like branches out and grows like a tree. And so, I mean, that's what I see is that you have to start someplace and you're also within the confines of COVID. So we have to start someplace. Right. And we eventually could get to all of these things, but they're not, you can't start planning all of these things and expect them all to work. There's too many. Things. Better to focus on one. Right. And that, that can be sort of a, a beta practice a little bit, see how it goes. Um, but at that, I, I think focus is really important at the beginning. Um, so that was the a cappella choir competition, the preschool melodic music. Monthly community sings. And when I say community, I think we mean Beshalom community. And um, intergenerational choir. The choir, right. And also collaboration with other houses of worship. Mm. So I also think we have to be realistic. That's the other thing. We have to be realistic about what we think um, we think will uh, create. We're, we're, we're supposed to be healing the community first, healing our congregation. Well, I mean, that's that, what we kept hearing in our meetings. We're doing this because we're healing the community and then, you know, and then expanding. I'm all for healing the community. And I, I know, I mean, you, you've all been through a very traumatic, extended traumatic time. And I, I think it's still ongoing. 
Um, but the purpose of strategic planning can't be healing the congregation. There are other processes that are, are used for, for healing. This is really to help move the congregation forward. And of course, you're going to ask, well, how can we move forward if we're broken? Um, but my response to that is that doing things a different way, being transparent about what you're doing, right? Engaging other people um, in you know, the, the, the creative work that you're doing. Um, you know, I, I think that's a way of changing what ha the pattern that has been. But this is, not, I mean, it's not really about healing. That's a different person you would have hired. So I, I, not sure what to do with that, but. I mean, so what, I, what I, I can take idea. the blame I'm for that. Saying, this is what we're hearing. So I can take the blame for that. It was a, it was a word that I was using to try to describe to everybody um, the purpose that, you know, when everyone was, when there was a lot of acrimony in the group, um, I was, uh -huh. I was trying to tamp it down mm -hmm that, you know, the outcome would be, you know, the brand and the goal would be to heal us and allow us to move forward and then reach out to the greater community. So that word healing was just my sort of catch word. Uh -huh. um, does that, does that make sense? Yes. And, and really, this is not about, you know, blame. It's really about a different right. way of, of, of working because I, I, right. I see a lot of potential in here. Right. Um, I, I, it's very exciting, actually. Um, I have some questions about it, but I, I could see like this is fresh. It's it's like um, it, it, it's new, and the way that you described it as you know beginning somewhere, and I totally agree with you. You have to begin. It's hard to solve world hunger all at one time. Right. So, David, I, I have a thought. Or obviously, we haven't gotten together to even discuss this a little bit. But I, I agree with Robin that our group of topics work together very well. But I would think before we jump out to the community and have a community song fest, what we have to do is develop it in-house and start small. And once that develops and there is a momentum going, some success, then we branch out to the next step and we do it, we take it step by step. Maybe part of the strategic planning is what is the end result? That we'd like to have a, a community choir, but it has to start small, I would think, to get everybody excited and organized. What does it mean to have this choir? Are they going to be adults? Are we going to invite? The little kids to come in and participate. How do we do that? Is it too cute? Or where's the cutoff age? I mean, those are things to, to discuss, I, I would imagine. But my, my thought is that we start small and gradually enlarge. Okay, so I'm going to offer a different perspective. Um, and, and, and this is not right or wrong because you know your congregation better than I ever will. Um, and I know, I, I bring some perspective on, you know, congregations, Jewish community, you know, going on about 40 years, I'm sorry to say. I'm happy to say, but, you know, it's kind of scary to hear that. <laughs> um, there's another way to, to, to go. So the motto that I have come to adopt is to um, dream big, start small, uh -huh. Um, move fast. I don't mean rashly, but, you know, move fast. Um, provide support, because if you're doing something new, you can't expect people who are involved in doing the planning, you know, to just adapt to it. They may need some help, like staff help or, or other kinds of help. Um, and then communicate make sure that there's good communications about what's working, not working, what's unexpected, um, assess, okay? and then either scale it up or close it down. And that alternative 
Um, if, if you want to get people, oh, sorry, my cat just took a flying leap. Leonard, come on. Sorry. <laughs> if you want to get people engaged who are skeptical, right, who haven't been involved, then I think one of the best ways to do it is to show that this is not just another, oh, they're trying to tinker around the temple, but they're not going to really do anything that's different. Right. So the idea of starting small, yes. But you lay out the, the dream, and what's the worst that happens? You aim really high, and you fail, and you let people know, we tried it, we learned, and here's how we're going to do it differently the next time. Or you engage the people who have said the congregation's never going to change, this is another meaningless process, they're at it again, but nothing's going to happen. That's very healing, by the way, too when people see that, that there's been a change. So I offer that as an alternative because the start slow approach frustrates the people very often who are looking for more fundamental change. It's, it's scary by the way, because you're putting yourself out there. But I've met a lot of people in the congregation This is a very talented, I, I'm not just saying this by the way, it's probably the most talented group of people I've worked with. And I think that you can do a lot more than maybe you give yourselves credit for. Okay. Um, can you share a little bit about how you, you know, uh, arrived at that, of, at these four initiatives? I, I have some general comments, but I'd like to hear from you about the process first, maybe using, you know, I mean, were you able to use the, the research guide on how to go about looking for an initiative. Um, at, where did these ideas come from? Connie? Oh, I thought you were gonna. You guys <laughs> it sounded like a confirmation class on an early Sunday morning. Everybody is kind Everybody's of- like, wow. Yes. <laughs> um, so I, I, you know, we're, we're, Cantor Agar, um, actually, this is where a lot, 90% of these, everything came from. Um, he spent a lot of time working with Julie and put together his dream list, you know, which is pretty spectacular. Um, so when it came to the music part of it, that's where most of the ideas came from. Mm -hmm. um, the arts, um, has been, you know, that that was a lot of me, of Simon. Um, I know Drew has some, but we haven't heard what they are yet. Mm -hmm. um, but, and Robin was really interested in this um, a cappella group. I mean, you, I think you, were you, did you do it before, Robin? Is that where all this came no, from? No, I mean, I was, I was in David Tillman's choir for 30 years. Okay. My, right. I, I, I know David Tillman. My uncle of blessed memory was a, a chazan. And I remember going to Cantor's concerts um, at your congregation when I was a child. We have, like you said. Yeah, the we, legacy we was, it was amazing. Amazing, amazing um, musical legacy here. Mm -hmm. Really, really. All the stuff that's been brought and done. We have Leonard Nimoy. Uh, who came and I know <laughs> narrated for one of our concerts. We we had Jose Bowen who wrote an entire jazz service that we wow. sang. I mean, we just the experiences that have occurred here are you know beyond yes. Um, but but what we're I starting with a new younger cantor, and I I'm not yes. sure that any of us know you know, what's possible. He has a lot of talents. He has a lot of talents. A lot of energy to it. A lot of energy, very right. sweet young man. Yes. yes. <laughs> but I, what I want to ask you as committee members now is where is, where are the, the data? Where's the research that support these ideas? Regardless of how you feel about them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, how do you know on what basis are you going to 
give of your time and ask other people to give of their time and money and talent to these initiatives. I don't know that any of the stuff on his list was done as like a survey. I, I don't think so, but I, we've done surveys that I'm not even privy to. Um, did we? I think what happened, stop me if I'm wrong, was that we came up, we were in a chat like this and people just came up with a list of ideas and it was a long list. Well, we had David's, we had, Cantor's list. Cantor's list. Mm -hmm. And people added to it or took away from, and will it winter it down to finally what we have now? Mm -hmm. So, so I don't know if there was that research and, and digging into it and seeing any, anything more than just the ideas of the evening. So that's, you know, this is, um, and again, this is not to be critical. I'm one of the things about this process is to cultivate people who are, you know, going to try and do things a little bit differently and you don't get to do things differently um, immediately. So I think that what you did was brainstorming and um, brainstorming can be very creative, but um, it's a small group brainstorming for a large congregation without getting any input to see whether or not um, this will have legs. And that, that honestly, it, it, as much as I, especially the intergenerational choir, um, you know, I, I just love the idea of music as a bridge across generations. And, and I think the other ideas and what you described their interconnections, um, you know, has merit to it, but, how do you know? Hi, Donna. How do we, how do we find Hi. out? Just Hi, got Donna. the Zoom link. I, well, what we know about our con congregation is that they love to participate and they love to sing. So I think that's where we jump off from. We haven't had that opportunity during COVID. And I think that we're itching to get yeah. back to that. Well, one of I the would... other, I'm sorry, one of the other things is we have had two or three a cappella concerts at Beth Shalom. They were competitions um, okay. uh, under you know, you know, Cantor sorry. Weber. And they were college groups that were a cappella, and they and people love them. So it that could that could be the jumping off point, just that we're gonna do it again because people really enjoyed them. Okay, and what does that have to do with um, impact, advancing the brand? You know, like then w w where are the where are the goals? Is it to cultivate a love of you know traditional and contemporary Jewish music so that more people will want to listen to Jewish music? Is it to I, again? This has to do with the the purpose of every initiative. Ideally, is to think about Cha helping to change a Jewish life, helping to cha change a Jewish community, not just a program. So I, I think I like these ideas a lot. And um, I've done a huge amount of work around Jewish culture as a gateway to Jewish living. So I'm, I'm all for this. But what I would have to say is there, maybe the cantor did the research, but I also don't want it to be only the cantor's idea. You have experience. You have the history. And you also have the passion for these things. So I, I my my recommendation would be have give more input. Do a little bit more work with the canter in terms of shaping the initiatives. But first um, be convinced that there's enough to support the resources that will go in to these initiatives. Right. And so can I just jump in? I mean, I think that was the purpose of giving you um, five, four or five 
so that you can feel free to discard like if if one doesn't work or if as you're working with cancer and as you're building it up and you're like mm, no this is just a one and done kind of thing throw it away um and you know if you go through all of them and none of them are working um come up well, with your own i mean that, yes. it, it all, yeah. yeah no please go ahead no, I just want to make, I just want to sort of reiterate that because, um, you know, you're not wedded to, mm -hmm. to this list. Like when we voted, I think everybody thought we were, you were going to each get one initiative and right. work on that. And, you know, the list was like 30 different initiatives and I tried to, um, group yeah, them. them. Yeah. I tried to, you know, group them according to the topic, but, um, uh, they could all be duds, you know, who knows? This is this is the process that you're going to go through. And, you know, if they're duds, you call somebody crying. That's what I would do. I would call Rabbi <laughs> crying, help. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but look, I think your chair is giving you um, permission again, <laughs> right? Uh, to, to, this is really the time not just to be creative, but to think about, um, you know, how do we do things differently so that we engage more, you know, Jewish souls and help to, you know, get people to have a love for X, Y, and Z. And um, from there, once you have your goals, the, the development of the initiatives will be easier. And what I would say is, maybe because we just finished Pesach, but ask the cantor questions, right? That's your role. Develop, be a partner with him. Um, let him give you more of his vision. I have a comment directly regarding singing and music. Um, the cantor said at our last meeting that he is planning to hire a string quartet for the holidays. Okay, so I, I think Truthfully, that speaks loudly. God, I'm not, uh, I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. So could you be what I'm saying? explicit? Yeah. Oh, I'll be explicit. So that implies that the, the, the actuality is there for that then there is an orchestra which functions as the, the um, vocal uh, voice, voices, for lack of a better word. I will tell you that last year, it was not a string quartet, but it was like maybe a, a clarinet and something else. And I, I frankly got a little tired of um, listening to solo voice. And then de facto, the two rabbis were the choir. I, okay. I, I, I want to be... Microphone. And I yeah. went to Har Zion for most of okay. them. I, 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 I want to be conscious of our time. How is this related to our discussion? It's an aspect of culture. And, you're, and I do agree that the um, acapella concert, as wonderful as it would be, it's kind of a once and done. It does not, it, it doesn't seep into the climate of the congregation as a, as a, a vocal. Okay, so uh, what, I, what I would say is anything related to the high holy days um, is really out of the purview of this subgroup right now. Okay. Um, it doesn't mean that it's unimportant. In fact, I think it's extremely important because that's the public face of the congregation. It's prime time, but it just, it's outside of the purview of, of this committee. Um, and you should talk about it with whomever is the right person. Um, but I do think that asking questions, so it's not just, well, the, the cantor is going to do X, right? But what do we as a committee and the cantor want to do in partnership? You... You have experience. And I, I think with a, and I, I really like the cantor, by the way. Uh, and I, I just love his energy too. But, True. you know, like I was young once, we all were, and we needed a little help from people who, you know, we don't want to dampen the enthusiasm, but we want to bring the wisdom that we gain as, as we grow older today. And, and I think that the cancer is very open. Yes, he wants he the congregation to be engaged. He, the list he put together was um, because we, you know, we we struggled with um, putting mm -hmm. a list together. So he he did it because he knew 
you know, he had like a million ideas and it's like, okay, maybe this is going to excite somebody, you know, and um, a lot of the initiatives came out of picking through that, that outline. So, but I think he um, is so open to Mm -hmm. what the congregation wants. So um, what I would say, and then we can maybe wind down unless there are more questions. And I apologize again that um, I I almost said Netflix didn't let me on. I've been on Zoom too much. Um, (laughs) But I think I like the ideas, but (laughs) brainstorming and liking an idea is not the same um, as being able to say, here's why we're recommending these initiatives. Um, Here's the rationale and here's the impact that we hope to have and here's how we know we're going to have it. These may wind up being your ideas, but to me, this is your opportunity to do things differently, not just in terms of what comes out of the process, but the process itself. So if it takes you a little longer, then I, I mean, I'll, I'll speak, Connie, with you and Arthur. I think it's better to get it right and take right. a little bit longer than right. to meet the timetable. But we can talk about that afterwards. Okay. So you haven't met yet with the, there's another one of our triads that's going to deal with um, service programming, correct? You, the third group there's an art group in the middle and then the third group that you assigned oh right. yes was, yes right. the friday yes right. yes yes right so those were more of our you know a batch of of um musical ideas right um so we don't want to step on their their purview which is like a coming from a different angle or is it well i i, I, I mean, think you want to coordinate i mean you know, again, nobody owns um, any any program or initiative, and it. You know, this may be a little bit messy. The planning at the beginning, because you're you're doing it a little bit differently. But that, but that's really okay. Right. So, 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 Connie, what, so one thing, I would... those two groups together, mm-hmm. the six of us. No. Do we? No. no. Okay. So, so what I would say, if you look at um, the music part, Robin, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of dance that we plugged into the music because there were a lot of great um, dance ideas that that sort of got didn't get really voted on, or and I just threw them in because I think that um, you know a couple of them were were pretty strong and the children's program. So. Um, if you find that all of your initiatives, you know, are, are fizzling out, um, you know, you could talk to Fred, Ann, and Mim and see where they're headed. Or, um, you know, I think if you want the full list of when we voted on it, I'm happy to send I have it. it. I wrote, I was. You were writing. Okay. I was writing. All right. I'm going to take okay. It. okay. Okay. All right. Um, because. Um, Rabbi, what she's, I mean, the, the Fred, Ann, and Mimi group, um, every other month on Shabbat, a special theme Shabbat with lectures, costumes, jazz, Shabbat, world music, Yiddish night. Um, I said, you know, I, again, I'm going to say to them what I said to you. Um, kind of been there, done that. Right. Now, that doesn't mean that it can't be done differently. Right. Right. For 2021. But my initial reaction is, okay, this has been tried many times. What will be different this time around? What will the impact be? How does it continue to further, right, this new focus and not just um, sort of reiterate it, but really bring it into a new direction? So I think if you, this is sort of to all of you and just to give the rabbi a, a my observation, when everybody voted, every the three initiatives that got the top votes were things that have already been done at Beth Shalom. And everybody gravitated towards those three initiatives, whether it was the Capella, the, the art shows, or the um, Shabbat you know, specialty. 
those got, and I, we, I just put everything else in because I thought you needed to have other things to look at. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So what he's saying is so on, so accurate. So go back and look at what we've already done and see if there's another way to approach it. So it's That's not just a program that it's a, an ongoing learning experience, participation. That will help move people again. To me, I, I think of concentric circles of involvement going from the highly uninvolved um, to the group in the middle that regardless of what it is, if you give them a cot, they would even sleep over and be there. So it's always Perfect. trying to move people in more deeply in relationship to one another and to the congregation. And that's where the one-offs, as good as they can be, don't, they right. just- They don't build that- It's too much to expect of a one-off to, yeah. Yeah, okay, I get that. Okay. So, All right. Um, uh, oh, can, yes. Can I just throw this out here? I, I know that this did not come up at one of our previous meetings, but um, you know, we I don't know if anybody was on for uh, last day of Shavuot or uh, Pesach, but um, so we had Hallel, which was broken up with the three clergy, and and I'm thinking to myself, I I know that there are kids in our you know in our high school who who have beautiful voices, and I'm not sure why there's not a teenage choir that is singing Hallel, Rosh Chodesh. Uh, this would be an ongoing, an ongoing culture, not a one and done, mm -hmm. but something which is, and I find that if you have, you know, like I spent a lot of years at Camp Ramah. So when you have the older kids yeah. doing something, the younger kids tend to like look up at them in, yes. and, and see them as role models and, and aspire to that. I, I see that as would would be a very positive thing. So um, again, I would definitely write to the cantor because the group that might be looking at, um, you know, kind of Jewish music during during prayer, um, that would be an idea to, to, to send to them. And then if you're working on your intergenerational choir, then you would think about, okay, so is there a connection? Are they separate? Can they build upon one another? Do they duplicate? Uh, anyway, I, I do, unless anyone has any more questions, I, I want to be respectful. We're, we're past the time. I apologize for having trouble getting on. Um, David, Robin, Donna. Connie. Connie, Connie, I'm going to talk. Connie and Julie, I'm going to talk to anyway. So that, I apologize. Uh, I did not receive that link until about two minutes before I got on. Just saying. Okay. Well, we, we it's it's recorded. Um, otherwise, it was a pleasure meeting more Lansman, whether you're transplants or um, locals. And thank you for the for the time that you're putting in. And and I do want to say thank you to Connie. Um, and, and to Julie, but I, I think from my perspective, this has been a, a good meeting and I hope it was helpful for you as you move forward. Thank you so much. Okay, thank, thank you. So Rabbi, did you get the link for tomorrow? I, I want to tell you what, Connie and Julie, if you can stay on and we'll just review the remaining meeting schedule. <laughs> okay. Great, yeah. okay. Thank you all. Thank um, you all. Let me double- I will email David, check. Donna. Here we go.